It's no surprise that the era of Nintendo Switch is over. I mean, it's a six year old outdated console. We haven't had a good game since Animal Crossing and it can't even play Call of Duty. Ugh. Thankfully though, our heroes at Sony and even Asus, I think that's how you say it, are here to save the day. With all these fantastical handheld consoles releasing left, right and center, which one is best? I'll talk about all of those today and let's be even more real. I love my Switch, baby. I, I can't stop playing Zelda. And in the meantime, while I'm working on this review, may it ever come out or may it rest in peace with my Xenoblade 3 review, I want to take a look at some other things and talk about the PlayStation Q because they revealed it recently in a state of play that I reacted to and I uploaded the whole reaction to my highlights channel if you want to watch it. But the general reaction to it seemed to be why? And yet I was watching it and I was actually kind of excited. I even think it looks good. A lot of people think it looks wacky. I don't know. I, maybe I'm alone in this one, but I do want to talk about it. And I want to talk about it while I finally take a look at the ROG Alloy. ROG Alloy? Ro Rogue Alloy? The internet was abuzz with this recently when Asus released their own Steam Deck competitor. And I got one. I wasn't one of the first two people. I mean, that was Linus Tech Tips and I don't know who. But I was in the first 100 people to be sent one of these, which is something I am very honored and, and very, I'm very excited. And thank you so much, Asus. The thing is, you sent it the day that Zelda came out. This arrived on May 12th. I was busy. I've been busy. In fact, I haven't played this thing really at all. I turned it on, I installed Elden Ring, I played that for a little bit and went, wow, this thing is sick. Turned it off and went back to my Switch to play more Zelda. I mean, at this point, I'm weeks late and I'm going to be weeks late if I try to do a video on this. Now it might look like I'm just wearing some stylish sunglasses out in public, but actually I have a 120 inch screen in front of my face right now. You've heard of Tears of the Kingdom, right? Right? Well, have you heard of Tears of the Kingdom being played on your glasses? And it's so cool, whether I'm playing in bed or let's be real, I don't actually catch a bus or a train or any public transport, but I could imagine doing that would be way better with these. I've talked about these before. They're the Vitro One. They're the world's first XR glasses designed for gamers. They are incredibly freaking cool. I am so blown away by these. It also works on the Steam Deck and of course, the Switch. I'm not kidding. Plug it in. That screen's gonna throw straight to these. There, it's already in the glasses. Now that's just a little image that you'll see if you're looking from this side. Obviously, if I put them on, I have a 120 foot screen floating in the sky right above my face. Super comfortable and lightweight, pixel free, 1080p, 60 FPS immersive screen with high color fidelity. This thing on the back, it extends the Switch's battery life too. And there's two ports on the back here to put in glasses. You ready to jack in? <laughs> Whoa! It's shockingly nice. It is very nice. I thought I was going to be able to see pixels. They have really good sound. They kept boasting about the sound. The Oculus Quest has a similar thing where like... It's like above your ears, but it sounds but if, like you're listening to stereo sound. Yeah. These things are available right now, and there's a launch discount on them. And if you use code BEATEMUPS, you'll get 10% off your entire purchase. So links down below. Now, I'm going to go... Uh, I don't know play games anywhere I want. So again, while we talk about the queue, I want to also quickly talk about this thing. If you haven't seen it before, it is honestly really nice. I should have had my Steam Deck with me. Let me go get it. Okay, I went and got weight-wise. It actually feels a little lighter. Don't quote me on that. I might be wrong. It's a teeny tiny bit smaller, but it's what it's capable of that's actually impressive. Seven inch display screen, 1920 by 1080. Whereas the Steam Deck, I believe only goes up to 900p or 800p. P. You got an AMD Ryzen Z1 Extreme processor, AMD Ryzen graphics. I mean, we're looking at 1.21 gigawatts. Wait. But it does, I, who cares? All you care about is the price and is it good? And yes, it is actually. It is technically more powerful than the Steam Deck. I was playing Elden Ring on this bad boy. I was getting almost 60 frames at full resolution. Now that was when I had it on pro mode. So you kind of sacrifice the battery and tell it to pump everything into performance. And 
yeah, it will sit for 45 minutes. Like the battery drains crazy quick. But what it can do is really impressive and definitely one-ups the Steam Deck, even if just by a little bit. The price is shocking. At $699, I'm actually very impressed by that. It's the same price as like the bigger storage high-end Steam Deck, essentially. And the reason why that shocks me so much is because at least with the Steam Deck, Steam can make money back on all the software sales and they take a loss on the hardware, but they make money on their software. We've had this conversation a thousand times before, but Asus can't do that. So they've just managed to make this affordable. It's a handheld PC. And as far as that goes, you know, we've taken a look at a and Neo. We've taken a look at X company here, but all of those that even come close to the quality of this are over a thousand dollars or more. So all that considered, this is nuts. It can play any game you throw at it. And because it's Windows, you can throw more at it. You can put Destiny on here, which you can't do with the Steam Deck. You can put Genshin Impact on here, but you can also just put Steam on here and make it a Steam Deck, as well as Epic Store or Game Pass. No hacking required. So this, I would say, is the best Steam Deck competitor on the market. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't buy a Steam Deck over this. Actually, I think the Steam Deck still offers more from a user experience. It's more that the games are optimized for the Steam Deck. The Asus is just a PC, so no games are going to be optimized for it. You're just going to have to wing it and hope for the best. But developers actually do work on the Steam Deck version of their games, and then you get that nice little green check, everything's playable, and it's great. The user experience of downloading something and knowing that it's just... Ah, <sighs> okay. The camera cut out. I didn't realize, and I've already made this whole video and talked about everything, including the PlayStation Q. So I gotta do it all over again. That's not your problem, that's my problem. I'm gonna wrap up this part though and just say, I look forward to playing more of my ROG ally. I think I got that right. But honestly, I, I'm still playing Zelda. Let's move those aside for a second and talk about the Panasonic, Q, the PlayStation Q. Sorry, I can't help but say Panasonic Q whenever I think of this. It, it, it's so close to the GameCube. And I want to stress, I really do like this, despite what a lot of people are saying. But the very first spec of the Project Q, okay, it's it's an 8-inch, good, HD LCD screen. I don't know why you wouldn't go for the OLED. The Switch did that, and you can see the big difference between the base and the OLED version. It almost made up for not having a Pro model. And I don't want to get hung up on this, the one thing I don't like about it. On a Sunday at 4.30 p.m. in 2023, you're going to give me my gorgeous PlayStation 5 HDR ray tracing 4K. The games look so good these days. And you're going to give us an LCD portable screen to play the games on? I don't know. I feel like most gamers these days that have PlayStation 5s have OLED TVs or 4K TVs. It's going to be tough switching between, I feel, but I haven't seen it, so maybe I'm wrong. As other things, I mean, we know the frame rate, 60 FPS, 60 Hertz, pretty typical and standard since we are streaming it. There's no reason why it shouldn't be at least that. The price, yeah, we're looking around two to three hundred dollars. We're not sure, but that's the estimated. I think any more is getting a little insane. Yeah, we are just streaming the game, so there's no need for a bunch of onboard specs. We're not building the next Steam Deck here. We're building the next Stream Deck. That's why you watch this channel. A lot of people seem to want PlayStation to make another Vita or the next PlayStation Portable situation. And I just, I don't think that's a good idea. It's just so hard to get into that market now. If they wanted to go the full route of a brand new portable and they want to get people in that market, they've got to start making exclusive games for it and building up a whole library. And you've got to start doing that now when you have the Switch, which is absolutely on fire and has completely cornered the market with like 15,000 games on it. And then on the the other side of the market, you have handheld consoles coming out weekly. A and Neo can't seem to stop releasing consoles. There's just so much they would have to compete with in this space. Do we really want Xbox or PlayStation to split their focus anywhere else right now? Let's just really nail these home consoles. So I think the idea of just giving players accessibility, another way of playing their games is just always great. The more options, the better. So why not put a Wii U pad situation in their hands where they can take their games off the TV and play it portably. Kim can watch Vanderpump Rules while I'm sat there playing my PlayStation at the same time. I don't know what's going on in that show. I don't care. Someone's cheating on someone. I, 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 I. <laughs>
And streaming technology has come such a long way. If you've played something like Nintendo Switch streaming, you've tried doing the cloud or Resident Evil and you had a bad time, don't worry about that. It's not, it's not even the same. In those situations, you're streaming off a server, someone else's PC, and God knows where it is. This is literally your own PlayStation booting up and you're playing your own game. And your PlayStation will be on when you're playing it. But you could even take it to a friend's house or somewhere else with good Wi-Fi, probably boot up your PlayStation at home, which freaks me out because if I'm not home, I don't want my PlayStation on. Maybe I'm old fashioned, but please don't burn down my house. But as far as the actual console goes, to me, it's just like almost buying another controller. I mean, it literally is another DualSense controller that someone took the bandsaw to and hacked down the middle and slapped the screen on the inside. And for a couple hundred bucks for an extra controller that also has a screen? I'm not against it. I think this looks pretty cool. I even like the design of it, if not a little brittle. I am worried I might sit on it and break it and snap it. it looks like it has some weak points, but I don't know. I think it looks cool. And yeah, as far as streaming technology goes, we've come a long way in that space. These glasses that I was sent that allows you to play your games in the glasses, they finally sent me this uh, neckband of theirs. I don't have on me right now, it's charging upstairs, but you wear it around your neck and you connect the glasses to it. And then it's all like a all-in-one unit. You can bring up streaming services, Netflix, Hulu, all of that, but you can also download something like Steam Link. And I did. The other day, I connected my Xbox controller to my neck and Steam Linked from my PC to my neck. And I was sat there playing Cyberpunk technically on my PC, but it all booted up from the glasses. And it was a one for one. There was no input lag. The technology is definitely there. And this will be a really cool addition as a way to play games. And again, I am so down for it. I just don't like that as LCD. That's my big thing because I'm gonna feel really torn if I am in the same house to not just play it on my TV anyway. But if it does look good, a lot of people might say, well, why would you wanna play if you're already, come on. We all play portably at home more than docked, right? Maybe it's just me, but I more often than not find myself playing in bed on the couch with Kim. I don't know. I just, I love playing games portably. I always have done. I was big on a 3DS and blah, 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 blah. I mean, heck, a lot of people are asking PlayStation to make another Vita, which is portable. So if that is such a big want for a lot of people, of course people want to play portably at home. There's obviously a market for that. PlayStation wouldn't make this if there wasn't a market for that. Kind of makes lands easier. If you wanted to play a multiplayer game, you take your queue to your friend's house and then you boot up your PlayStation from home and then you like buddy up with your friend, play some Destiny or whatever. I can definitely see uses here that are really cool because again, it's just about accessibility. So yeah, I'll check out the queue when it comes out. I'll keep messing with the rogue or rog whenever I finish Zelda actually is when I will do that. If I have any more updates there, I'll let you know. But for now, I'll add this into my ridiculous handheld collection that I'm amassing here. And I want to know what you guys think about the Project Q, which I'm really hoping gets a better name at some point. And the rug, heck, and the glasses. All this tech is wasted on me. Of all the people to have this stuff, I'm playing Zelda on my Switch. That's all I care about. I'm gonna go do more of that right now.